Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. The guest that I have on today needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce her anyway. I am sitting here having a conversation with K.L. Jones. Now, her resume is so extensive and so phenomenal that we would be here all weekend just going over a small portion of what this young lady has accomplished. But just to give you an idea of who this young lady is, she is the founder and creator of Elevate Now, a creative media and personal branding and media production company that specializes in brand development, digital storytelling, and branded entertainment. She is an award-winning three-time L'Oreal, that L'Oreal, Paris Women of Worth nominee and Amazon, yeah, that Jeff Bezos Amazon, number one best-selling author, director, producer, filmmaker. But here's the best part. She is passionate about amplifying and distributing diverse stories for women of color, which in this day and age is so very important that I cannot stress the importance of that enough. And with what we had last year with Oscar So White and what's going on now with the good grief, the Golden Globes with the foreign press, with them not wanting to do the right thing, elevating the voices of women of color, people of color, period, is so extremely important. So when you say K.L. Jones, put some respect on it. Miss Jones, welcome to a conversation (laughs) with how are you? Oh my gosh. Okay. So first of all, my cheeks are hurting because you literally have me over here blushing like crazy with that introduction. (laughs) I'm I'm so honored, Floyd. I am doing well and I'm really excited about being here with you this evening. So this is definitely a highlight of my day and I've been looking forward to having this conversation with you. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming. And I was so excited I tell you, and, and I talk about this all the cl- all the time, and let me just put this out there, that I am not a spokesperson for Clubhouse, but Clubhouse has been a game changer because the type of people that I am coming into contact with, it's just amazing. And yeah. let's, let's take the professional aspect off the table. We're going to take that off the table. The people that I'm becoming friends with, it's so amazingly outstanding. It, it, it's just ridiculous. And I met KL in a room that I went in one day, actually a room with you and your other two partners talking mm-hmm. about your, your television station, which we will touch on. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just happened to be in an audience and I came up on stage and started, you know, running my mouth as I normally do. And we, we struck up a friendship. And as I was sitting there listening to her, I said she is definitely someone that I have to have on my podcast because this podcast is definitely about women of color and the excellence that they uh, present to the world. So, KL, tell us how you got started. That is always, I feel like, such a loaded question um, because I've been doing this for so long. I really got my start in the industry as a child, around eight years old or so, my mother has always had me involved in some, you know, form of um, the arts, whether it was dancing, you know, I was taking jazz and tap dance classes and modeling and going to etiquette school and in church plays and school plays and auditioning for commercials. I remember one of my very first auditions as a child was for an Oscar Mayer commercial. They had uh, been coming around to some of the local schools where I'm from, Columbus, Ohio, and they were doing like these uh, really, I don't, I don't want to call them weird, but at the time they were weird to us, right? Like auditions looking for kids to be a part of um, this Oscar Mayer commercial campaign that they were doing. And from the very beginning, for as long as I can remember, I have always, always loved storytelling. I am one of four girls, 
And uh, although I have sisters, I was raised as an only child because I am my mother's only biological child. And when you're an only child or being raised as an only child, you get creative real fast, right? So I used to sit my stuffed animals up, line them up against the wall and pretend I was the teacher or give them different roles to play. Like everything that I've ever done has always been deeply rooted and centered in creative storytelling, whether it was through dance, song, acting, writing, you name it. And I've been in literally every capacity, both in front of and behind the camera. And so even with that, though, the reality of the world hits you. You know, being raised in a single parent home, um, unfortunately, I lost my father. He was murdered when I was 10. And so just being raised by a single mom, you know, you have to entertain yourself. Mm -hmm. And we moved around a lot. And so storytelling was also the way that I was able to adjust and adapt to my environments whenever we moved. And that just stuck with me. But the reality was, is that I was a young black woman growing up in America. And I can remember going off to college and I was attending Norfolk State University as a pre-law major. And I remember one of my professors telling me, like, what are you planning on doing when you graduate? And my goal was Claire Huxtable was my guide, right? That's <laughs> even though I had this love of the arts and storytelling and creativity, I knew that for a career, if I couldn't be an actor, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an attorney like Claire Huxtable. And so that's, you know, the path that I took and I set out on. And even, you know, in college and working in corporate America, I've always had my foot in the industry in some capacity. And so that professor said to me, you're a black woman. And, I, and then at this point, I was a single mom in college. I had my oldest when I was 20. And so he said, you got multiple strikes against you. You're never going to really find success as an attorney. You're a black woman, you're a single black woman, and then you're a single black woman who's also a single mother. And I took that to heart and it it really set me on this path of like confusion. I didn't know what I was going to do. I ended up graduating with my degree in public administration because I switched from pre-law to public administration uh, with my political science degree. And it didn't matter what job I held in corporate America. I always had this yearning for the entertainment industry. And so I would act, I would get involved in different productions, whether it was independent local productions, I've been in live broadcast television, you name it, stage plays. When I lived in New York, I was a part of Vi Higginson's uh, spinoff to Mama, I Want to Sing for those who are real OGs and know anything yes. about Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. And so the spinoff to Mama, I Want to Sing was Gospel Is. And I auditioned and landed a role in that production I was in for two seasons. And so, and at the time I was working in corporate America as a marketing executive for Sigma Healthcare, but I stayed connected mm -hmm. to what I felt was my roots. And so that kind of has been the journey. And then, you know, we can get into more. I don't want to give you, you know, overwhelm you with everything, but I've always just been in it. And it, it is my first love and will continue to be the guiding force that really you know, informs everything that I do today. Well, first of all, shout out to that professor. Good grief. That was a, <laughs> a, a, a phenomenal vote of confidence. Thank you so much. So you went to Norfolk State. My wife graduated from Old Dominion University. Oh, so I was I was always up and down Route 13, driving yes. from Philadelphia. When you said Norfolk State, I said, oh, I got to shout yes. out. I got to shout out Virginia because I was yes. definitely a uh, Route 13 traveler. Oh, yes. And, yep. Wow. <laughs> Chesapeake Bay Bridge. But that's a that's Chesapeake an entirely Bay different. Bridge. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's a different podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is. But you said something very interesting. And I'm I'm reading this book right now. It's called The Big Leap. And mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the the the, uh, the author's name. Mm -hmm. But uh, Gay, Gay Henders. Gay. I, I have it sitting over here somewhere. I know what you're talking about that, but, but it's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and he talked about the zone of excellence and the zone of genius. And when you said that even when working in corporate America, I always felt that I needed to be doing that. Yep. And he talked about you were, so you were basically in your zone of excellence looking to get into your zone of genius which you're doing right now and you're doing it phenomenally well. So what 
finally made you decide to say, you know what? It's time to go. Mm-hmm. It, it's time to do what I'm passionate about. And mm-hmm. for a lot of people, that can be very scary because mm-hmm. I'm sure that, you know, you had a good paying job, phenomenal benefits. And then you're mm-hmm. saying to yourself and, and, and you also you're now a mother and mm-hmm. you're saying to yourself, well, I'm going to go do the acting thing. I'm going to go do the creative content thing, Mm -hmm. which is a very iffy business. So what, what finally made you decide to just say, you know what, I'm, I'm going for it. Well, I'm laughing because you ever heard the saying, tell God, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, I had this plan of, I was a mom and now I'm, you know, a wife and and then I'm a mom again. So I have three children. I had just had my last child and it was a really rough pregnancy. It was a high risk pregnancy due to lupus complications. And I was working in corporate America as one of the only uh, black female executives at a international advertising agency. And I loved my job because it allowed me to bring some aspects of the entertainment piece into my work. So I really, really love that. And I had my son and I was a high risk pregnancy. So I went on maternity leave early and I had an extended maternity leave. And about four months after I returned from maternity leave, I was laid off. Mm. We had massive layoffs. So this was literally right in the middle of the housing crash you know, the economic crash of 2007, 2008, 2009. And so I was laid off and I, you know, went from having this high paying salary, like you said, great benefits, beautiful home. My husband and I had only been married for a few years, so we were still technically really newlyweds and our world seemingly came crashing down. And I could not, and at the time I was living in Columbus, Ohio, which is where I'm from, and I could not find employment anywhere. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter about the fact that I had an undergraduate and graduate degree. Didn't matter how well versed I was or what depth or experience I brought to the table or what my results were. The market was really volatile and I couldn't find anything until a parent of one of the uh, teammates of my daughter who played basketball at the time He owned several McDonald's franchises and he offered me a job as a manager. So I went from making six figures a year to making $12 an hour as a manager at McDonald's. And during that time, also just the weight of everything was a lot on my marriage and my husband and I were separated. Mm -hmm. And so then I found myself like being separated. We were we lost everything everything. We lost our home. My vehicle was repoed. It was the most humiliating, humiliating, excuse me, experience Mm -hmm. um, ever, but it was exactly what needed to happen for me to take the next step into my destiny Mm -hmm. because I would have just continued to go on the path of building my career. I was very um, much into being seen as this black woman who was highly educated with this phenomenal career, making moves, making boss moves. That was my thing. And so I was okay with that. Right. And it, you know, as a result, you know, I had a mentor tell me, you need to leave Ohio and go to California with your mom. And I said, why? And she said, you're very talented. We see all that you have to offer. Why don't you go and pursue your acting career full time? You've been doing it your whole life. Now go do it in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I was crazy enough to believe her. <laughs> and so I, you know, eventually packed up with my youngest child and moved with uh, $700 in my pocket. It's so funny when I tell this story because I think about Taraji P. Henson and her story of how she came to California with just a few hundred dollars in her pocket and with her son. And it was a very similar journey for me. And I hit the ground running and God began to just open doors for me that didn't make sense to other people because I came to this industry and this this town with no connections. Mm -hmm. And well, the few connections I did have, I wouldn't even dare tap into them because I wanted to do things on my own. Right. And, And that was the beginning of that. And then fast forward a year and a half later, my husband and I reconciled and he relocated here to California and things were looking great. 
my acting career was blooming. I was working with one of the top coaches in the industry and had a great mentor. And then lupus reared its ugly head and I landed on my deathbed where I was in ICU for almost a month. And that changed the game. Wow. My career as an actress. Yeah. Wow. Wow. There's there's a saying. I don't know if you're familiar with Ed Milet. Ed Milet is one of my go to's as far as personal development, because I believe that if you're in this space, you definitely need personal development. And you just proved my point because the book that I told you that I'm reading now is one of Mm -hmm. your favorite books, Mm -hmm. which basically is about personal development. But he has a saying that things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And even though some of the things that you experience were just backbreaking, Mm -hmm. it basically set you up for where you are right now, as they say, iron sharpens iron. Yep. And in order for you to become that diamond, you had to have some pressure applied. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people don't understand that sometimes when you're going through something, a, a, a separation, losing everything, mm-hmm. being on your deathbed with, with lupus, is, and, it's, and we're, we're definitely about to get into that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it, it's it's a it's a job situation. It's it's a job situation. Absolutely. And you're 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 in it, and you're saying to yourself, "Okay, what's going on?" And Absolutely. God's sitting over there saying, "Well, you know what? Just you're gonna have to ride this wave because I yep. have something in store for you." Because sometimes when you go through really bad things, it's setting you up for your victory. But when it's setting you up for your victory, it's teaching you how to handle the things that will come along with that victory because the devil's always busy because he never likes to see you do well. So when you start to hit your stride, you know (laughs) something's coming. You know it's coming. And -hmm. with everything that happens to you that supposedly has a negative impact, it's basically giving you the backbone and the steel to deal with what's coming next. So let's talk about that. So you're doing, you're doing phenomenally well. Thank you. And then here comes lupus. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the crazy part about that Floyd. So we're talking not that long ago, Mm -hmm. 2011 Mm -hmm. to be exact. And the reality was at that point, I had already been, living with lupus for at least 11 years. Mm -hmm. I had been living with a a solid diagnosis for 11 years. I was misdiagnosed for six years prior to that. So we're talking somewhere between 11 and 17 years. I had already been living with the disease, Mm -hmm. but I was not vocal about, I, I didn't publicly share my inner circle knew, but you know, in terms of being on social media and sharing, I definitely wasn't sharing that. I certainly wasn't sharing it you know, within the industry because I didn't want to be seen as a liability on sets or not, you know, be cast for a certain role because I was seen as a liability and it was just too much. And, um, you know, I was watching what was going on with Toni Braxton and her health because she also has lupus and, you know, uh, just the financial things that she had to go through. She lost a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to cancel shows and I just did not want that to be my story or my legacy. And so I kept it a secret. And for a while I was able to, because it wasn't that I was able to keep the disease at bay per se for a while Mm -hmm. I was, but then when it would rear its ugly head, I just did really well to keep it behind closed doors and people never knew what was going on. But this was different. It was different. Mm -hmm. I literally was fighting for my life. And not only was my body impacted internally, but my, my outer, you know, in my exterior, had changed significantly. So I knew that I wouldn't be able to return to the industry as an actor and it crushed me. But here's the beautiful thing about all of that is that there was this great revelation that was had. And that was before as an actor, I was only focused on telling story, like being in the spotlight and telling other people's stories, mm-hmm. stepping into a character to tell other people's stories. And so that made it very much about me. 
But God said, I have something different for you. And I remember just as clear as day what his promise was to me on my deathbed and what my response was to him as a result. And that was that I'm going to, in the same way that I raised Lazarus from the dead, I'm going to elevate you from this deathbed. So that's where elevate now Mm. comes from. It comes from that promise from God. And then my response to him was, whatever you tell me to do, wherever you tell me to say, whatever you tell me to go, whoever you tell me to say it to, my answer will always be yes. I tell this story often. And so here I am. I, every every level that I achieve is just simply because it's not because I always have the answers. Mm-hmm. It's not because I always think that I'm so skilled that I can get the job done. It is simply because I said yes, and I believe that God is going to honor his promise as I honor my promise to him. And so where I went from being in the spotlight and telling other people's stories, God, you know, through a character, Mm -hmm. God's like, no, there are people that I want you to shine a spotlight on so that their voices and their stories could be heard. But even then, I still didn't get the full scope and magnitude of what that assignment was going to look like and be. And so it started with me simply needing support and trying to find a lupus support community where I could heal and and not feel so isolated Mm -hmm. and alone. And I just took to Facebook and I started, I turned on my webcam and I just started talking. And the more I did that, the more people started resonating with me, the more people started reaching out. Then the media inquiry started coming in and I was invited to be a guest on talk shows and podcasts and radio shows and print media and digital media. And it just exploded. And then from there, people started reaching out to me and saying, can you teach me? how to do what you've done. I want to be featured in the media. I have an important story to tell. Can you help me do that? So then I relaunched my consulting career and started consulting and coaching clients on how to position themselves to attract media to tell these incredible stories. And part of that process was integrating video. And I was getting frustrated with what I was being, uh, what I was seeing being taught in the industry Mm -hmm. about how average video and here comes God, I'm minding my business and here he comes again and just boom, here, this is what you're going to do. And it was take your corporate experience as a branding, marketing and advertising executive and marry that with your passion and your experience in the entertainment industry. And this is how you're going to help people. And the pieces fit together so well. So for me, it wasn't, it was no longer just about tell your story, Mm -hmm. use video as the medium to tell it. Now we're going to get into full on production and we're going to take this, the Hollywood secrets and make you stand out as a trusted authority and leader in your space so that people can hear you. Because when they trust you, mm-hmm. when they know you, when they like you and they trust you, they listen and they take action. Wow. Wow. Now we're going to go back to Norfolk State. Yeah. To your <laughs> professor. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll never amount to this. You'll never amount to that. Fast forward to to. Everything that you utilize, including that degree that supposedly would not amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And what people need to understand is sometimes the setback is the setup. You know, we get we get we go we get a little cliche on this show sometimes, but it's the Mm -hmm. truth. The setback Mm -hmm. is the setup. Because sometimes in order to take five steps forward, you have to take ten steps back. But that's the way it works. But then again, you're 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 as you're taking. And it's interesting because, you know, in my travels and some of the things that I've done, I've noticed that when I've taken steps back, I'm actually laying groundwork for when I begin to take the steps forward again, because sometimes you need to learn certain things in order to take those steps forward because if you don't learn them then it becomes a misstep i know i'm saying step a lot but then it becomes a misstep you know Mm -hmm. you know so the fact that you took you're phenomenal because I, i i want you guys to really understand what you just heard every bit of adversity that kl faced she flipped it Every single bit of adversity that came her way was flipped to the greater good. Okay. I lose everything. I'm going to I'm going to pivot and I'm going to do this. 
Mm-hmm. I have a diagnosis of lupus. I'm on my deathbed. Okay, well, we, I have something in store for you. So we're going to take that situation and we're going to have it to where you're going to help so many other people because so many other people need help and they're being silent about it. And sometimes you just need a catalyst to say, hey, you know what? I'm going through that as well. And then here you come along. Oh, wow. Well, she's doing this in the industry. She's doing that in the industry. But guess what? We're both going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. So you create Elevate Media, Mm -hmm. which is which is a phenomenal play on words. And you start helping all of these people. And then Mm -hmm. things really start to take off. L'Oreal, Amazon Mm -hmm. bestseller. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, it, the, the Amazon bestseller book project, it is so beautiful how that even came about because the publisher was actually previously a client of mine. Mm. And she was one of the people that came to me and said, look, I was referred to you. This person recommended you because they say you're the best at helping people like me to build a powerful personal brand. And she was already a very successful business owner and consultant, but she was behind the scenes of her business. And she knew that she had a story to tell, but she was dealing with apprehension about how she would be perceived as this young millennial, Jamaican born, purple, natural haired woman. Mm. Would people take her serious? Who, by the way, was also in school getting, uh, studying to get her doctorate at the time. Oh, wow. And so we built this personal brand for her from the ground up. Today, she's not only a publisher, she has multiple number one Amazon best-selling book projects, including mine, under her belt. Wow. And it, it's all about the story. It's about not trying to fit into this cookie cutter model of who people say or who society says you should be as a insert whatever your title or titles are. It is about really being authentic and showing them and saying, I have something of value to offer the world. And that was really my thing. Elevate Now didn't even start as a media company per se. It started off as a blog. And it was just therapeutic for me. Remember Mm -hmm. I said storytelling has always been that healing salve for me. It's been therapeutic. And so for me, it was start telling my story through written word. And at the time, blogs were a big thing. And the more I showed up, the more opportunities showed up. So I've had incredible partnerships with nonprofit organizations, both locally, regionally, and nationally, including Lupus LA, which is based in Beverly Hills, California. And they're very much deeply rooted in the Hollywood scene. So then I started getting opportunities to do things with um, Michael B. Jordan and go to private screenings and you know things with Tony Braxton and just being involved. I was um, a chairman of one of their uh, social initi- initiatives called Savvy. And it was a social awareness initiative that they had for patient leaders like myself. Mm. And so Mm. then that opened up doors and it just it was like a domino effect. And the fire just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, ultimately ended. I was on Tamron Hall show last year. And it is all because I just can I don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. I just continue to show up. I continue to serve. I'm a servant leader. You know, people see me and they're like, oh, my gosh, you've done all these things. You've accomplished all these things. And it was because of my work, both in my industry, but also in the lupus community that landed me or earned me not just the media attention, but the L'Oreal Paris nominees, three time nominee, the bestseller status, you know, with my book and also lupus proclamations. I have over seven lupus proclamations from Southern California to Columbus, Ohio, Mm. from mayors because of the national work that I do. I was the first black woman, first person ever, but first black woman to create a lupus awareness beauty campaign and commercial. And then we did a PSA and that was a national campaign. Wow. Because of the work It's because that regardless of what I'm feeling, what I may be afraid of, because we all have fears, right? We look at people who are leaders and in doing great things and we feel like, 
oh, their life is great. Not perfect, but maybe there I could never do that because and then we insert whatever we think we can't the reasons why we can't do what we see someone else do or operate at the level that they operate in. And so that was the catalyst for me launching a new social initiative called Beauty Behind the Brand which I launched in late 2016, early 2017. And it was, but it was this idea that we see the success Mm -hmm. of so many people online, but it's a disjointed view. Yes, it is. We don't understand the stories. And then you have people, especially women and especially women of color, we're comparing our journey to someone else's. And then we might feel, you know, insecure and all of these different things that don't even belong to us because we're looking at someone else's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. And so I set out with the intention to really just bust this thing wide open and say, listen, we all have a story. Yes, you might see the success of this incredible woman, but let's let's learn the story behind them because it's not easy. My journey hasn't been easy. And I knew that I felt like I was doing other women in particular a disservice because they were only seeing the highlight reel, but they didn't know that I was still going through chemo. Mm. They didn't know that I was wearing wigs because I was losing my hair or that my skin was like just all the different things. They didn't know that I was dealing with depression because I was still trying to figure out who I was in this new shell of a body and, and, and just everything that I thought my life was supposed to be wasn't right. And so then that social initiative turned into a documentary film, Hmm. which we started filming in 2018, solely funding it. And so we didn't have investors or anything like that. So it was a slow to build project, right? And then the pandemic hits, we were getting ready to pick back up production. We have to pivot. And it's like, what are we gonna do? And so here comes God and all his infinite wisdom. Boom, here you go. From idea to launch in six days, we launch an extension of the documentary film, which by the way, is not complete and launched an innovative unscripted live television docu-series which is now airing on my network, KEJ Network, distributed on KP Media TV globally. So so as I said, when the podcast first began, if you weren't here, I said, this is Miss KL Jones. Put some respect, <laughs> not with a CT, but with a EK. Put some respect on it. Because with everything, see, I don't go for people who make excuses about certain things. Everyone goes through what they go through. But Mm -hmm. when you say to people, well, what do you have going on? Or did you complete that yet? Well, yeah, well, you know what? What what had happened was, see, Mm -hmm. I can't subscribe to that because Mm -hmm. when I'm sitting here listening to you and everything that you've been through and everything that you've overcome and Mm -hmm. the amazing things that you've accomplished, because as you said, you put in the work yeah. you put in the work. And that mm-hmm. is so important that people need to understand that for anything to happen, you must put in the work, but you said something yeah. even bigger than that, that I want everyone listening to this right now and who will be listening to it in the future. I need you guys to understand one thing that KL said, if you take nothing else from this, she is a servant. You will get more things done by serving others than as opposed to serving yourself. Yeah. The, 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 the things that I've done in this business and the most success that I've had in this business was when I was actually serving someone else as opposed to being self-serving. Yeah. But enough about me because this is about you. You have your own station. Thank you. Folks, Thank you. She, has her own, she has her own television station. So let, let's talk about let's let's talk about that, because, I mean, you you know, you're, you're you just you say one thing and then hear some something else. I told you, ladies and gentlemen, I told you that we do not have enough time to go through her whole resume. We're going to get through as much of it as possible. But so, yeah, let's let's talk about your 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 documentary and your your television station, which is on Roku and a couple other streaming services it is and it is still very mind-blowing to me that every time the words come out of my mouth Mm because it's me it's little old me from columbus ohio 
you know, a girl that has a really storied past and have made a million and one mistakes that God would allow me to be sitting in the seat that I'm in today. Um, But like you said, it wasn't just because God favored me and said, oh, yeah, you've been a good girl. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just bless you with this. It's because he loves me and he favors me, but he also knows that he can trust me Mm -hmm. with the work. And so when I launched my live television docuseries last year, I was with a different media platform. And it just wasn't the fit that I thought it was going to be. And that's okay. And, you know, I wasn't for sure what I was going to do. And one of my colleagues, business colleagues and partners, Keisha Puckett, who is the uh, CEO and founder of KP Media TV, had this idea like, okay, we're going to create our own. And that's exactly what she did. And I knew from the very beginning, you said in my intro that part of the work that I do is amplifying the voices and stories of women of color. But the other part that I'd like to add to that is also women over 40. Mm-hmm. I'll be 50 this year. Okay, girl. And- <laughs> All right, now. And I have seen enough. I've been around the block enough to know and see that women like me don't always get an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do something to change that. And so through my partnership with KP Media TV, I was able to do just that and launch KEJ Network, which is the KL Jones Network. And, you know, we are in development on a ton of different projects, about a dozen different projects. We have a live programming channel. We have an on-demand channel. Um, We're constantly looking for really compelling, quality produced stories to distribute on the network and partner with them. We have so many things under the hood. It is more than a distribution platform. It is more than a network. And that's what I love about it. If anybody that knows me will tell you, I don't like to do anything that anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. I like to create my own path, my own lane and blaze the heck out of that trail as much as I can to create opportunities for other people. And so with this partnership with KP Media TV, I'm not only able to have my content distributed globally on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and have the audio of my show uploaded as a podcast to iTunes and Google Play. But now I'm in a position to be able to open the door for other creators, visionaries, leaders with a message, with the talent, with the gifts, with the stories to share their brilliance with the world. So I have a program called Lights, Camera, Broadcast Your Brilliance, where I take my clients through this process of developing their own IP, whether that's a talk show or a docuseries or a short film of some sort, a a social series. And then they have that distribution on my network. So it is a a comprehensive digital distribution solution where we can host film festivals virtually, concert series. Like there's just so many different things that we have. And I I just think every time I think about it, I'm like, my goodness, God, you really, you really did it with this one. He up there dropping mics like, uh, yeah, I did. (laughs) (laughs) He like I'm the man. I'm the, the Aloe Black song. There I'm the go. man. That's not like just he making it rain. Mics, mics all over the place. And and it just is when I think about the magnitude of this is when we talk about legacy. Mm-hmm. You know, off camera we were talking about our families, and I shared I'm the mom of three. I also have two grandchildren and one on the way. When wow. I'm not here any longer, I want my children and my grandchildren and their children's children to be proud of the work that their mom and their Mimi did. It's about legacy. And you do that by taking the focus off of you, being a servant leader and creating opportunities for others using what you have. What's in your hand? Start there, use that. Yeah, and and that is so important. Legacy, Yeah. creating generational wealth. Yes. And we are so far behind that eight ball and one of the ways that you do that, and I'm, I'm going to point out what you said, IP, yep. IP, 
intellectual property, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Go get you some of that. And basically what I mean by that is create your own content because mm-hmm. what, what you're hearing right now is I have created my own table. I have created my own lane. So when you have people tell you it can't be done, you're sitting here looking at someone that has done it. I've done it. Countless others have done it. So what we as black folk need to do Mm -hmm. and anyone that's out there creating content, you need to get to a point where you say to yourself, I am going to be the creator of my own table. I'm going to create my own lane. Take and stop, it. stop expecting uh, permission. Absolutely. Don't stop looking for permission because that's the key. Like, who told me I could do this? Right. You're not Oprah. No, I'm not. And I'm not trying to be. I'm K.L. Jones. Let's, God said my name will be great. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about that because we have so many people that feel as though they have to wait on someone else. They feel as though they have to act, they have to wait for someone to give them permission to, mm-hmm. to do things. And, and I, and I do a room on clubhouse on, on Monday and we talk about that all the time with, with so many of these actors. Well, I'm waiting on my agent to, and the question is always, why are you waiting on your agent? It's a partnership. You don't work for them. It's a partnership. So mm-hmm. l- talk about that. The fact that so many people have this mindset that they need someone else's permission to create their destiny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the easy, easiest way to address that is to face the harsh reality that it doesn't matter how sweet you think you are, how nice everybody thinks you are at what you do. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't agree with like, or support what you do. And so my question to your viewers and listeners is, are you going to let that stop you? What's more important, being obedient to the call on your life or getting the approval and acceptance of someone who in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter? We have to be, I always say validation is for parking. Say that again, please. Validation is for parking. Now, hear me out. You should absolutely have a trusted circle that you can go to to share some things with where you value their feedback and you know that they have your best interest at heart. But at the end of the day, the decision falls with you on what you're going to do. And so even if mama and them don't like it, what are you supposed to be doing with it? Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to be doing with it? Oftentimes we're looking for the acceptance and acceptance and approval of this person over here. And it's this person over here who barely knows you or doesn't know you at all. Or you keep overlooking and they got the yes that you need. That's going to take you to the next level. That's going to propel you to step into exactly where you're supposed to be and collapse the time. Mm -hmm. We keep running around like the folks at Jericho walking around 40 years (laughs) because we're waiting on something when we already got the answer right here. We were already given the instruction and provided, you know, with the tools and resources that we need. But because we're over here waiting on so-and-so to give their thumbs of approval on something, we keep going around that wall. We keep going around that wall. And so the thing is to stop. I said that I'll be 50 this year. Imagine if I would have stepped into this level of brilliance at 30. Mm -hmm. Where would I be now? Yeah. You know, and so it is, you know, I'm very careful when I say stop looking for people to approve your thing because I get it. We're all human. Mm -hmm. Our flesh desires acceptance. But you just got to be real intentional about who you're looking for acceptance from. And then even at the end of the day, if no one approves or accepts what you're doing, if that's the thing that you know you've been called to do, you got to see things as bigger than yourself. I always say your story is about you, but it's not for you. Mm -hmm. That means that your thing is always bigger than you. Me as an actor, this is not for anybody else as an actor, identifies as an actress or an actor for me for K.L. Jones. Me as an actor, 
was all about me. Me stepping into the role that I am in today is about it being bigger than me. Right. That's my path. And so if I waited on people to approve and, you know, even now with the work that I do, I get varying opinions and advice and feedback about even our business model, because it is not like a streaming platform like a Netflix or, you know, Hulu or, you know, some of the smaller independent ones where, you know, they're paying the content creators to have their content distributed on their platform. When we talk about IP, you can't talk about IP and not talk about ownership and then the flexibility and freedom mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. able to monetize in the way that you see fit to meet your goals. That's how you build generational wealth. But we're so stuck in this system of tradition that some people cannot disconnect and detach themselves from the monster. This masterclass has been brought to you by Floyd Marshall from a conversation with, and I hope, <laughs> I hope that, every, <laughs> but you know what, you, you know, you, you, you speak truth to power and it's so true because people, they get so tripped up wondering, well, what is such and such going to think? Well, who cares what, what such and such is going to think now? Don't Mm -hmm. get that twisted. If you're creating content, you're creating content for an audience. But even with that, who or what audience are you creating that for? Because guess what? Everything that you create is not for everyone's eyes because everyone's not going to watch it. So even Mm -hmm. with you creating content and looking for the approval of a certain audience, that's something that you have to double down on and research. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So the fact that you're out there wondering and wasting time trying to figure out, well, will such and such approve of this or will such and such approve of this? And every second that goes by is a second wasted and is a second that you can never get back. Absolutely. And I'm at the point now where I am very conscientious of how I spend my time and who I spend it on, because that is the one currency that you can never recoup. You can right. regain money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can regain, you know, lost real estate. You can regain all of that. But the one thing that you can never get back is your time. So how are you spending your time? Are you spending your time wondering about, well, you know what? This person's not going to like this or this person may have something to say about the fact that I want to go start my own streaming service or I want to shoot this movie. So what? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to go to bed and wake up with yourself. So at the end of the day, the approval starts and ends with you now as you said you must surround yourself with a phenomenal team because it helps you must build collaborative relationships Mm -hmm. you got to build those relationships to where people they don't have the same drive as you because it's your thing but they can see your vision and are willing to help you get to where you're going and vice versa you're willing to help them to get where they're going So now how would people, if they were interested in submitting to your, your, um, your station, how would they do that? I'm sorry, your, um, your network, network, how would they do that? So it goes back. I'm so glad that you just said the last key piece before asking me that question. And it's about being in the right type of community. Right. And so it is very much why. I don't just take anyone. The, the KP Media platform, We there's an application process. You can't just have, just because you have the money mm-hmm. to pay for distribution doesn't mean that you automatically get a spot on the network. It's an application process because there's a transfer of energy. There's this synergistic piece that must be in play. And in part, because on the back end of what we have, and that's why I said you can't compare it to any other streaming platform or distribution medium or you know platform because we have a master, it's a media mastermind program hmm. where when you come into our world, you don't just have your content distributed on KL Jones Network or KP Media TV. You come into a community of like-minded but very unique in their own way, content creators, leaders, thought leaders, experts. We have people in the entertainment industry. We have people in the business industry. Some are chefs. Some are 
you know, counselors and therapists, some are consultants, like it runs the gamut, right? And the the common thread is that we are community and we're here to support one another. Every resource that we have, we make available to one another because when one wins, we all win. There's this really big educational component that's there. So it's almost like a PR brand, a, a branding, marketing, advertising, and PR plus production, media, and distribution platform mm. all rolled into one where we do live events. You know, one of our, um, one of my network partners, I'll call them network partners, mm -hmm. who just recently came to the platform is actress Patrice Lovely, um, most notably known as Hattie Mae. Oh. And a lot of Hattie Carrie's productions, both film and television. And so there are those instances where, depending on the person and what they bring to the table, mm -hmm. there isn't that subscription piece that's oh, in place. Okay. Hmm. Because they, they're vetted, they have the work, they have the content. And so there's these partnerships that we have in place. But for the vast majority that are coming in, it, it's different. Everybody gets the same attention. Mm -hmm. Every it's the same access, the same resources. Um, KP Media TV, their whole agency, they are working with big PR agencies without spilling the tea. They, we've, we've been featured in Market Watch, Digital Journal. Some folks have been featured on Telemundo. So there's this mm. all of inner workings that are going on behind. Radio shows, talk shows, media features, digital print, you name it. And it is all because they are a part of that community and they come in, they get active, they show up, they lead, they serve, they lean in, they learn. And literally, we have experienced such massive growth. We haven't even been in existence a full 12 months. Mm. We have over six figure views on the network. That's amazing. That's we amazing. Have Forming shows, and it's because of the work that we do internally. It's, it's anybody can create a streaming platform or distribution platform. Quite honestly, if you have the capital to do it, anyone can do that. But what can't be replicated is the energy of the community and the mastermind that we've built and continue to build and nurture and grow. That's where the true magic happens, and that's what really sets us apart from other. You know, I don't even want to put us in a category with anybody else because it just isn't, it's not a fair comparison, mm. honestly. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys were very intentional in how you wanted to present your network to the world. Oh my gosh, absolutely. When you think about the leadership in this whole ecosystem, you have over 60 years experience in branding, marketing, digital marketing, advertising, public relations, entertainment, media, every every facet of entertainment from production to on-camera presence training. And so that's the value that we bring. And we knew that we wanted to create something that hadn't been done before. So if you're familiar with the blue ocean theory. The oh, blue, yes. Okay. Blue so ocean, always, red ocean. Yes. Yes. I, I I always like, and it's, this is our blue ocean experience and we're a bridge. I see myself as a bridge between those who are in the business world and those who are in the entertainment world. Cause most people in the business world don't understand entertainment and most folks in entertainment don't understand business. And so there's this blue ocean opportunity that has been created and we can extend that through what we offer. That is that is you know what that is absolutely amazing. That is amazing. And the fact that this is a black owned company. Black woman owned. Black black <laughs> thank you for the correction. Black <laughs> woman owned company. See mm -hmm. we've operated again under that premise that we can't for so long. And you have so many examples of, as Barack Obama said, yes, we can. So mm -hmm. many examples of black excellence, black female excellence. And you know what? Honestly, that was 
one of the main reasons that I created this podcast mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm an avid podcast listener. I mean, I consume podcasts. I, I listen to them every day. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I wasn't hearing, and I learn a lot, but the one thing that was becoming very frustrating to me was the fact that there are so many phenomenal women of color doing mm-hmm. so many amazing things in this space and I'm not hearing from them. And, and mm-hmm. it's such an honor and a privilege to have someone such as yourself oh, on, you. on this program. And I plan on having both of your partners yes. on the program because these stories need to be told. I'm a father. I have two daughters mm-hmm. and you have so many young women out there and young men as well because Mm -hmm. you can learn so much regardless if you're male or female you can learn so much from people that are doing it right Mm -hmm. that look like us yes that we're not seeing when Mm -hmm. we turn on the news Mm -hmm. so the fact that you guys are just creating a new standard of excellence and raising the benchmark and raising the mark on you know intellectual property creative media how things should look is just a testament to again the work that all of you are are actually putting putting in but we're almost done we could be here for another hour because there is so much that we did not talk about so you are definitely going to have to come back on the show because you know but we we, we, we're not done yet you consult I do. I do. I produce. I consult. I just. I do. I do. So, what you want to know? So, 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 <laughs> you're you're consulting. So, in in, in what capacity um, do do you consult on 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 business? And so, but I guess yeah, everything. So, yeah. So, in terms of consulting, definitely personal brand development, right? So, I work with clients on building a really powerful personal brand, developing magnetic messaging, being really, really clear on what their story is. Because if you're in business, then marketing absolutely is a part of what you do. And most people get marketing wrong because they're missing storytelling or they have, they're misinformed about what storytelling is and the role that it plays in marketing. And so I work with them on getting really clear on what their brand story is, We've developed the visual brand aspects of that. So whether it's their brand film, docu-series, talk show, whatever that is, podcast, we, we work on the positioning. So how do I position myself as a thought leader, as a credible authority in my niche, in my marketplace? And that is all, all has to do with building a really powerful personal brand. But then when you do that, you're able to attract more media attention. So I've never pitched myself for any media. Every media, earned piece of media that I've ever had, and I have a lot, has always been because of my positioning, my story, and my messaging. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And so when you're able to do that, you become a hot commodity. You're able to command higher prices for your consulting, your serv- you know, your packages, your products, your services. And you're also in a better position to attract really amazing brand partnerships. And I've been very blessed to have some of the most dynamic brand partnerships on this planet. But it is because of the intentional work that I've done in building a personal brand. And so I take that system And I create a pathway, a unique pathway for my own clients to be able to do that. But then we take it a step further because there's tons of personal brand strategists, consultants, coaches out there. But again, remember I said, if you know me, to know me is to know I don't like doing anything that anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. So I had to elevate my own game. And that is where that media, it wasn't enough to just teach my clients how to leverage the power of video to stand out in the market, but it's bringing that whole entertainment aspect, both film and television, excuse me, into the mix. And so we talk about IP and ownership. When you have other people that give you money for things, they kind of get to control the the conversations and the outcome. So 
we put you in a position to invest in yourself. So then you can control the outcome. That's ownership. That's powerful ownership. And so what I do where how I've married that is then we move from the solid personal brand development into the media brand development. Now we're going to build your media empire as an extension of your personal brand. That puts you in the driver's seat forever. Mm. As long as you continue to do the work, but it's not enough just to create content. You, you can't be on the KL Jones Network or KP Media TV with subpar content. So it's giving them all the tools that they need to build a successful media IP. So then I take that consulting into remote production. Mm -hmm. We, my agency provides remote production for clients. So if you have a talk show, I have a client now, she has a talk show that's actually airing in about uh, an hour. Okay. And we filmed a full season in four days. Mm. We take a full season, eight episodes in four days. And her show rivals anything that you would see on ABC, NBC, CBS, Bravo, CNN, because we operate in a spirit of excellence and bring that product, that high quality production value. So it's not just about getting on a live stream and pushing it out to Facebook or YouTube or IGTV. It's how can we elevate that experience? How can we elevate the stories that you're sharing? That's what's going to draw more people to you, whether you're a consultant, an author, a speaker, or a filmmaker, or a media personality. How are you going to stand out? Mm -hmm. I'm, so, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You, I was just going to say so that to answer your question, those are just some of the ways that I show up as a consultant and support my clients. And, and that is so, I, I need to harp a little bit on that excellence point that you made. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about excellence and something else that you pointed out, production value, yes. production value. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that I run into when I'm looking at films for both of my film festivals. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to point the camera and say roll camera. Correct. It's not enough because mm -hmm. you have so many other filmmakers out there doing exactly that yeah and so many people get upset well my film didn't make it in or I didn't this or I didn't that mm -hmm. well how seriously did you take it before you decided to put things in motion how with no production piece? with anything oh. with anything as far as your entire network if mm -hmm. you know you, you you just you you spoke so much of excellence and 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 how that is such you know you know a part of what you guys do, but unfortunately, so many people don't take that into consideration. They just as you they just want to throw it up there. Yeah, like who who's who has time? And maybe it's because I'm older. I don't know. But who has time to just do a thing to say that they did it? What's the purpose? Much like. Money needs a purpose. I, I was watching a video of a friend, a really good friend of mine who is a consultant as well. And she was talking about you have to give money a purpose. You can't just say, I want to have a six figure month. Do, why do you want a six figure month? Right. Do you know where you how much money do you need to live the life that you desire to live? That, that was my friend, Gabrielle Leonard. And it made so much sense. And it's something that I think about all the, like if you're creating content, you're creating an IP, what's the purpose of it? Is it just to say that I created this thing? And, and then what? What do you want it to do for you? Mm -hmm. What's the end result? Like, what is it supposed to create once you put it out into the world? And so when you begin to think on a deeper level in that way, you give it purpose but then when you understand, when you're really clear on what the purpose of that thing is, you have no choice but to operate in excellence. I'll take my own IP, which is Beauty Behind the Brand live television docuseries. I had never seen it done before. So I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't have an example. And I didn't have a film crew in my house. We're all locked down on quarantine. So who's coming up in my house? Nobody. 
But what I did have was my own home studio with a Canon DSLR camera and a webcam, which I'm on now, and I had some lights. And I had a story to tell. I had the on-camera experience and I had people who I wanted to bring into the conversation and share their stories. I didn't know, I, again, I said in the beginning, I have live television broadcast experience, but I certainly didn't have remote production experience. So the question was then gonna be, was I not gonna do this thing and put this IP, this piece out into the world that had purpose because of what I didn't have or what I didn't know? Mm-hmm. No. So I said, how can I do this and do it in excellence? And I created a plan and I worked the plan and I was able to do it with an all female remote production crew, women of color from New York to Atlanta, to Baltimore, to California and remotely we produced 13 live segments, episodes. Mm -hmm. And not in my words, but in the words of our viewers, it rivals any show that you see on television. Mm -hmm. That's where the spirit of excellence comes in. It's not just like, oh, I got this story to tell. Okay, I got a camera, I got a mic, I'm gonna go ahead and put it out. Cool, we got this cool remote production software and let's just put it out. And every week, you can ask my producers, I would challenge it. Like, how can we take it to the next level? Mm-hmm. Because the first one was cool, but good. Cool. Now what we got to do? Mm-hmm. Second one was cool. Okay, now how can we add to that? So it's being willing to look at the work that you've created and put out into the world and be honest with yourself and say, how can I do better? Mm-hmm. Excellence happens in motion. It's developed in motion. You can't do a thing once and think that's the end all be all. Mm -hmm. You grow, you refine, you create, and you excel. It's it's momentous. It's building this momentum. So that's what we do. And, and, you know, until you're really honest about the thing, and if you don't give a thing purpose, Mm -hmm. it's just a thing. That is so true. And and that's when that, you know what? I knew I liked you for some reason <laughs> because that's how I approach my show. And it was always so interesting when, because at the end of our four days of screening, we have a major award show. Mm-hmm. And when I set out to do it, I said, I wanted it to look just like the Oscars. Mm. So people have to come dressed up in tuxedos and, you know, evening gowns and things like that. And after every year, and we've we've done it five years, and then, you know, COVID, so we had to take a break. Yeah. After every single show, people always say the same thing. I thought it was going to be nice, but I didn't expect that. And my comeback is always, why not? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. is it about us that mm-hmm. we shouldn't mm-hmm. demand that yeah. level of excellence. I don't understand that because mm-hmm. what were you expecting? Yeah. I know what I was expecting. What I was expecting is exactly what I gave you because if I were to go to something, this is what I this is what I'd want. Absolutely. So if that's what I want, mm-hmm. that's what I'm going to give you. And we really have to get out of the mindset of just okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to put it out there. We cannot we you just you if you're looking to level yourself up and, 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 and take it to the next level, you have to operate basically in the mindset that you just beautifully laid out. First show was great. How can we make it better? Because after every single year that I would do a show, what can we approve upon? What can yeah. we do differently so that when the customer comes back the next year that they have the absolute best experience that they ever that they would leave saying, wow, that's what you want. So when someone turns off KP Media, you want them to say, damn, I can't wait for the next show. And, exactly. if, and if that's not the reaction that you're getting, then you need to take it back to the drawing board and you need to do it again. But it's an improvement 
It's an improvement. And just being honest with yourself. Right. Because when you're when you're an artist, we're, we're creative. What Erica Badu say, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my, you Ish. know. Right. So, but even in that, you, you can't be married to a thing. No, you cannot. You have to be will, be engaged to it. Be in love with it. Mm-hmm. But when you're married to it, then you don't have any flexibility. Because you're not willing to be honest mm-hmm. about what's in front of you. I'm going to I'm gonna have you, to use that. I'm going to have to use that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to tape that. I'm going to have to, Insta, I'm gonna have to Instagram reel that one. <laughs> Real that like Floyd, that was deep. Well, I, I stole it, but it, yeah, it was deep. Wasn't it? It's all good. We we share around here. We share around here, so it's all good. But no, you you really have to be willing to take a step back and say, "Great, I did my best in this moment. Mm-hmm. Now, what can I do to make it better in the next moment?" And when we do that, we create something super powerful, Floyd. Like it is just, you're right. I have a problem with it. And again, it goes back to why I'm so passionate about elevating the the voices and stories and brilliance of women, women of color, but especially women over 40, because I need to remind folks of some things. If you're millennial and listening to this, I love you. My kids are millennial. I got mad love for you. I do Instagram reels, ticks, all the TikToks, all that. Like I'm, I'm down with you. I do some of the millennial stuff because it's fun, right? But at the same time, we invented this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are the pioneers of the digital age. We're the pioneers, Gen X. We are the pioneers of so much stuff. We were latchkey kids. It's, they call us the middle child. You know how middle kids get treated, Mm -hmm. right? And so we're often overlooked and undervalued and underrepresented. And a woman over 40 shouldn't just be cast as a certain role, type. Because we're multidimensional. We have a depth, breadth of experience and things to bring to the table and stories to tell and, you know, things that how we can shape history and culture and conversations and communities. But oftentimes we don't get the chance to do that because of how old we are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a firm believer. My mantra is you see something you like, you don't like, you hear something you don't like, you experience something you don't like. In my world, you got 10 seconds to complain about it. And then you got to move into action. What's the solution? So my defiant move in this world is the KL Jones Network. And you are doing an absolutely phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. And with that, where can people find you? Because you're on a couple of uh, social media platforms. So please let our audience know where they can find you. Absolutely. So on Facebook, which I'm not on often, but I'll be back. Um, because we are bringing season two of Beauty Behind the Brand live back, which is also live broadcast on, it's simulated on uh, Facebook as well. But that's Elevate Now Creative Media. And Elevate is spelled with two A's, two A's. Look at me. I don't even know how to spell my name. or my business. <laughs> It's spelled with two L's, just like my name. Well, you so. can't be perfect at every daggone thing. I can't be perfect at <laughs> You know, day. you got to have a it's flaw somewhere. Real live stuff and it happens and I'm glad when I flub I actually am happy that I do it because again it reminds folks that you're human right right things happen Mm -hmm. I do it on my live show and it's like people get so caught up in perfection it's like the world is not perfect no people resonate with people who are real and Mm -hmm. honest and authentic and raw if you're perfect, I'm looking at you like, yeah, uh, hi. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking hey, at your you Instagram know. like, mm, <laughs> yeah, your hair always done. You no, are like, look. exactly. My part is probably crooked. My makeup, you know, we did like a two minute. Usually <laughs> I do a five minute beat. We got a two minute beat in today. So who knows what I look like on camera, but it doesn't matter. It's my message, right? right? It's it's the experience and the conversation that we're having here today. And so, yeah, to your point, yes, you can't be good at everything. And I, you can't be good at all things all the time. Let my wife tell it. I ain't good at a lot of stuff. Oh, 
house. But I'm good at what I need to be good at. That's more than enough. Exactly. So to answer your question again, you can find me on Facebook at Elevate Now Creative Media. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter and Clubhouse at K underscore dot or K underscore L Jones, E L L E Jones, not K L E, not Kelly. It's KL. I have to say that all the time. And then you can also find the KEJ network on Instagram as well. And if you click the link in my bio, it's the very first link in my bio on Instagram. You can access our web app on KP Media TV, where you will find the KL Jones network and all of the incredible content that we have on there. We're actually adding more. We're looking for new content. And so it's an ever growing and evolving network that I'm really, really excited to share with the world because we've got some amazing things in the works. So check me out. But my my favorite place to be is Instagram and then Clubhouse. Yes. Yeah. And if you are <laughs> on Clubhouse, you definitely need to be following Miss KL Jones because mm-hmm. there's nothing like getting an education and you're getting let me let me say something, folks. You're getting an education for free. Something that you would pay a lot of money for. You have people going on Clubhouse and sharing their expertise for the low, low price of bandwidth. Yeah. So get you some good Internet in your house, you know, or or get you a good phone plan because that's basically all it's costing you. I've learned so much from people such as yourself and, you know, all of the other phenomenal people that we interact with on the app so it, it's squad. i have to shout out my mod squad, squad and my, my partners keisha puckett and karen fenderson like that is my crew i would not be able to do the things that i'm doing now like the level of brilliance that you see it i feel like a person is only as good as the people that they surround themselves with and the community that they have and i have a ve- i'm very very blessed to have an incredible community that I found even through Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And that's the mod squad. You've had Tamika Briscoe on your show before. That's my sis. Like, you know, Donna Marie and Gino Brooks and Danita Patterson. Like, the list goes on and on and on. And Miles Grizz, like, all of these incredibly brilliant people that you said they're leaders. They know their stuff and they're freely giving their time. Yes. Day after day, week after week. And it costs you nothing but your attention to tune in. You learn so, so much. And so I'm, I'm just really honored. Clubhouse has been a game changer. It you has. Said that it has been an absolute game changer and it really has accelerated a lot of the work that we were doing at the beginning of the pandemic. And so it's just really a blessing and an honor. And we'll be on there tomorrow with some special treats for business owners and brands who have a product or service that they want to get out into the world on TV. So make sure you're following. Oh, I will be on there as well. (laughs) Checking everything out. Yes. But KL, this was absolutely amazing. This was phenomenal. And again, it was such an honor and a pleasure having you on a conversation with you have definitely got to come back because, as I said, there is so much that we did not even cover. That's how deep that river runs, folks, (laughs) that there is so much that we did not even get to. But Mm -hmm. if you like this podcast, share it with your friends, because, again, here we are with so much phenomenal information that you've been given tonight. And if there is something that you've heard today that you can immediately incorporate into your personal life or into your business life, please implement it. Because guess what? It will only make you better. It will only elevate your game and and take you to that next level. KL, thank you so much, Queen. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. You have honored me. And I am so happy that you came and shared a an hour of your life with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you know, from the moment we connected, I knew, you know, you just are really brilliant at what you do. Thank and you so I really much. appreciate the space that you hold for so many of us, especially women of color. And it is 
you know, just proof of your integrity and your character. So for as much as you appreciate me being here, I appreciate you having me here and using your voice and your platform and your expertise to continue sharing these stories because we don't often get the opportunity to do that. And so my hat is off to you. I am honored and will always show up for you in any way that I can. And it's been nothing but a delightful pleasure to be a guest today. Thank you. Well, you know what? We're going to end it on that high note. (laughs) We're going to end it right there because I'm not following that up with anything. (laughs) And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in and have a phenomenal weekend and go into next week with a plan and with a purpose. All right, guys, take care. Peace out. (laughs)